take out this self-comprehensive shirt of inadequate income for life. And that is provided you don't fire for the policy does. Now, we'll over that again, I don't quite understand about Well, certainly. System. You see, it's really very simple. You pay this small premium here once a month for 20 years. At the end of which time, you're completely covered for life. Now, isn't that simple? Well, it sounds reasonable, All but... All right. Uh, uh, it's a deep sign right here. Well, no. The proposition sounds interesting, but uh, I believe I'll think it over for a few days. Uh, thanks for being over. Well, I'll call in a couple days. All right. Thanks a lot. Sure. That's funny. Sort of hit him. I wonder what I did wrong. Seemed like a nice guy. I wonder what he was talking about. Do you know that every day someone loses a sale or creates a misunderstanding just because he does not speak intelligibly. Now in the next few minutes, we're going to give you some examples of good and bad speech and show you the main faults of most speakers. We'll show you some things to do and some things not to do. The first thing that every speaker should do is to learn the three basic aims of public speaking. One, you must be heard. Two, you must be understood. Three, you must be pleasing. Now remember these three points. You must be heard, you must be understood, and you must be pleasing. Now most of us fall short in at least one of these three points. For instance, uh, well, the fact is, we spent many nights in the uh, uh, jungle looking for uh, headhunters. Uh, one night, just as the uh, uh, sun was going down, uh, we heard a, a, a noise in the bushes. Uh, something was uh, uh, creeping towards us. Uh, all of a sudden, it. Uh, uh, it attacked us. Uh, it, it was a uh, uh, an ostrich. Now, this ostrich was. Many of us clutter up our speech with uhs and errs, and in this way we create vocal static. We can be heard, yes, and we can be understood, but we're dull and boring. Now, here's another typical example. Student government is something we've all worked for, and now that we have it, we must make it work for us. We have all given our time and our ideas and our strength to make it possible, and now we must cherish it, nourish it, and make it live. Most of her audience can't make out what she is saying. So she's not heard, she's not understood, and she's not very pleasing. Now let's look once more. Funny thing happened up there in the station. See, I was sitting there waiting for the fellas. We were going out, and the guy come up to me and he gave me a big song and dance about this being his seat. And I said, Mister, I said, this, <clears throat> this isn't your seat. You see, I've been sitting here a whole lot longer than you seem to think I have. And I think that, that since this seat uh, belongs to me, that this seat... It's not hard to find fault with that speaker. Many of his listeners won't be able to understand him, and those that do won't admire his sloppy speech. Do you know that the trouble with most of the speakers we have heard can be traced to one thing? Practically all of us would be better speakers if it were not for this one big fault. Carelessness. Yes, carelessness is at the root of most of the ills of poor speech. If this speaker would concentrate upon overcoming his speech fault of saying uh and er, he could be an interesting and effective speaker. Does carelessness make you this type of speaker? Now this girl is marked by carelessness because she speeds over the words of her speech just to get them said. And she drops her voice at the end of sentences so her audience has difficulty in hearing and understanding her. Is carelessness making you this type of speaker? Or is your carelessness the same as that of the man who runs his words together, mumbles, drops his G's, and uses generally sloppy speech? 
Have you found yourself yet? Do you know what your careless speech habits are? The important thing is to recognize the trouble and then take steps to correct it. Now let's see if we can help you. First, every good speaker should practice opening the mouth wider than usual as he or she speaks. In this way, the words can flow out and the audience can hear you. Speak with life and animation, yet speak deliberately. Use plenty of lip and tongue action. This helps you to enunciate clearly so you will be understood. Speak in low, full tones so that what you say will be pleasing and appealing to the ear. Don't let your voice be high, shrill, and unpleasant just because you're a little excited. Keep it low and pleasing. Speak with variety. Change pace so that each sentence doesn't sound just like the other. For if you want to keep your audience interested, your manner of speaking must be pleasant and interesting. And finally, let your voice and speaking manner reflect your own personality. Let it be sincere and typical of you, rather than stilted and stagey. For instance, Ladies, I'm so glad to see you all here and see you looking so well. Our subject this afternoon is flowers. Don't you just adore flowers? Honestly, some of them... Do you see what I mean? Now what she really meant to say was this. I'm awfully glad that you've come out today, ladies. Glad to see you looking so well. The subject of our discussion is flowers, one of which I'm particularly fond. I know that many of you, too, share my great enthusiasm for this subject. The idea is to be interesting. Interesting but real. Now, are there any questions? Professor Bueller? Yes. Will people think I'm peculiar if I start speaking differently than I ever have before? Now, that's a good point. But I don't think you need worry about it. You see, your speaking voice will become more adequate as you practice the rules of good speaking. And your friends won't think that you're peculiar. On the other hand, they're more likely to admire you for having improved your manner of speaking. Speak audibly so you may be heard. Speak distinctly so you may be understood. And speak with life and enthusiasm so you may be pleasing. And remember that good speech will be a great asset to you always. It is the mark of a cultured person and a well-developed personality. Take pride in your voice and your speaking manner. Take pride in the way you sound. You have only one voice. Be careful how you use it.